Hey Raj, how are you? Uh, what is the process from the beginning to the end if you want to pursue a career or if you want to go for masters? Applied at University of Saskatchewan uh, and applied for a masters in pharmaceutical sciences there. What is the research like? So is it very hard to get a part-time job in Saskatoon, right? So what is the yeah. interview like? What kind of questions can you expect in the interview? And what is the overall, you know, monthly expense if you are living as a student in Saskatchewan? Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to interview one of the recent graduates from University of Saskatchewan. Raj Rai moved to Canada with me as an international student to pursue his post-graduation in business administration. Uh, but later on, he decided to pursue his master's in the field of pharmaceutical science and he got enrolled in University of Saskatchewan. He recently graduated with flying colors and he is also one of the few students who were selected for a scholarship opportunity. In this video, I'm going to ask him a few questions like what is the course load of a thesis-based master's, how is life overall in the city of Saskatoon, and what are the employment opportunities you have once you graduate as a thesis-based master's student. So without wasting any time, let's get right into it. Hey Raj, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yourself? I'm doing good too. Thank you. So thank you so much for taking out the time to do this interview. I think that all the information you will share over this interview will be very helpful for the people who are planning to come to Canada as an international student, uh, specifically if they are applying for masters in universities like the University of Saskatchewan. So let me start this interview by asking the question, what is your educational background if you don't consider your masters from the University of Saskatchewan? Mm -hmm. How did you come to Canada and what is your educational background? Well, back home in India, I've done my bachelor's in technology in biotech. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, I moved to Canada and I was doing uh, my postgrad in business admin at Selkrix. And then I decided that, no, I needed to go back into research. So I applied at University of Saskatchewan uh, and applied for a master's in pharmaceutical sciences there. So uh, can you please tell me, you when you came to Canada, you came here with a plan to do business administration, but what made you think that uh, it's a good option to switch back to your original career? Well, after I came here, like uh, the business uh, program that we had at Selkri, it was good. But at the same time, when I was living there and, uh, you know, exploring other opportunities, I came across that uh, that we have more opportunities in research in Canada compared to what we had back home. So I thought it, it will be a good opportunity if I go back to my, my own field. And that's when I like uh, looking into master courses and looking into other op uh, universities uh, to find the research field that I was interested in. So that's why I decided that I should go for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can you please guide me through the process? Once you decide that you want to go for master's, let's say for University of Saskatchewan, uh, what is the process from the beginning to the end if you want to pursue a career or if you want to go for master's? Okay, so basically you have two types of master's degree. Mm -hmm. One would be the thesis based and the other would be course based. Course based are like basically just taking your courses, classes and and all that whereas in thesis based you have to do like research it could be like a lab based research could be just a computational research but as long as you're doing research and producing papers for publication that your thesis based master and my field is mostly into research so i need i wanted to get into research based master's program mm -hmm. and in canada to get into research-based master's program, you need to find a supervisor. Okay. The supervisor, what I mean is like, could be like any professor at a university who's doing research program. They're doing research. And in order to get into those program, you first task would be to find a supervisor who is willing to take you as a grad student in their supervision. So you need to like, go to various uh, like colleges web uh, university website read about what their research is about and see if that research interests you then you email them that oh this is my background and how the research that they are doing aligns with your background and how much you are interested in their research and you send them all this email thing 
telling that you are interested in their research so could you like take me as your grad student or something so for me it's a, it's a very tough task finding a mm-hmm. supervisor is the toughest most task in getting the admission i had to send about like a 100 200 emails to all faculties like all over canada like i looked into all the universities not only like university of saskatchewan and i emailed all of them and fortunately i only got call back from two universities it was one was uwit mm-hmm. university of victoria and then another was university of saskatchewan i had an interview with them i didn't get into university of victoria Mm-hmm. and like fortunately i was able to uh, find a supervisor at university of saskatchewan and then was, that's when i decided that i'll move there and do my master if i got what you are saying the first step is to find a supervisor so you have to go through the database of every university and find all the supervisors specifically the field in which they are working on right now and then based yeah, on their yeah. research or their specialization you have to send them an email that you are interested in their field or you want to pursue a masters under their supervision and then they respond back to you they send they, i think they interview you and once they decide yeah So did they notify you via email that they have accepted you as a student? Yeah, they, they notify you through email and then they tell you that now you can apply at the university. Okay. Saying that okay, the supervisor is willing to take you as, as a grad student. Okay. And, and then th- you can like officially apply. Okay, so I think if a supervisor accepts you then the process becomes really smooth. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. So let's move on to the next question. What is the overall like average cost of masters uh, if you are going for a thesis based masters and is there any chance that you can get, you know, scholarships or grants or any, anything like that? Yeah, especially in Canada like you have very good chance that you can get scholarship or stipend to do your research uh, here. So basically one of the reason why university asks you to find a supervisor so that a supervisor can fund you for the research that you're going to do for them mm-hmm. so basically they give you a stipend okay from their research grant oh okay so from and, grant. And, yeah so in 80% of the cases you will get a stipend or a scholarship once you have a supervisor yeah, is that on a monthly basis it is on monthly basis yeah so okay. in like when i was in my master at UFS you get about for master program in pharmacy department you get about like 18000 a year mm-hmm. which is more than enough like and i wouldn't say more than enough but it's sufficient enough for you to like sustain your studies okay and uh, since you are a graduate student of university of saskatchewan how is the overall uh, student life you know for university of saskatchewan for masters what is your like average workload is it easy to manage things can you do a part time job at the same time with research it becomes little difficult to okay. do your to like have a part time job and that's one of the reason why they give you a stipend so that you don't have to work outside Okay. because they want you to be like dedicated to your research work. Mm. But still you can as long as you like you are able to manage your research work, you are able to produce results for your your supervisor. And there's like there's no rule that you cannot do a part-time job. Mm-hmm. So Raj, my next question would be once you let's say you get an interview with a faculty who is interested in giving you the opportunity to work under research student right so what is the yeah. interview like what kind of questions can you expect in the interview so basically like there will be like a general question about yourself and your education and your background and most importantly they look for they won't expect that you will know all the lab techniques that they have in their lab but they want to see how willing you are to learn new things okay. so you need to like portray yourself in an interview in a way that you have the attitude to learn and you are like a positive person and you are excited about learning new things uh, and you are not afraid of challenges and and just also like talk a little bit about the research that uh, your supervisor is doing okay nice yeah and uh, 
just to show how much interested you are and then ask some questions regarding mm-hmm. their research mm-hmm. so that they will have an idea okay maybe that okay this person did go through my my research work and maybe like go through a few of their research papers yes okay just to get an idea right. exactly what they're doing okay. and how you can contribute in their research what is the research like so you have to do i think you have to submit a thesis for your masters right yeah and so yeah. what is the overall process of research like what kind of research did you do well in the beginning it will be hard like you will feel like you know like you don't deserve to be here <laughs> because <laughs> exactly that, that that's how i felt like you know like i'm i'm so i felt like as if i'm like too dumb to be this to be in this place uh but you know your it's very important that you, your supervisor has faith in you and mm-hmm. and especially in like research based masters you will have a lot of experiment that gonna fail and you have to repeat like multiple times to get the result that you're looking for and like uh, you will have like multiple projects not every grad student will have like a same project everyone work in different projects uh for example like my project was on gene therapy like we were developing some nanoparticles like a diamond nanoparticle to deliver gene into the cells so and someone else was doing some other kind of work initially like i was i was to be honest i was not very comfortable with all that lab work since i had not done it in like a long time so it took time and and don't expect that you will finish your masters in 2 years especially in in a research based masters don't expect that you're going to finish, finish it in 2 years but until or unless you finish all the objectives of your research you will not graduate okay okay so it uh, ideally it will take 2 and a half to 3 years for you to graduate hmm yeah and one more question about students you know so, so let's say somebody is moving to saskatchewan a university of saskatchewan uh, as a master student and they want to look for a part time job is it very hard to get a part time job in saskatoon not really it's like saskatoon is a big enough city that they have you know all that restaurants and stores so it's it's not it's not very tough to find a part time job you can easily find one especially in summer Mm. Yeah, can, yeah yeah in summer you can work as much as you want so even if you are getting a, let's say a stipend you can work yeah. full time for four months right yes you can yeah and again one more one more thing like in, when you're doing research in you don't get like summer break oh okay there okay. there no summer break yeah yeah technically so you have to continue yeah, so your research mm-hmm. you continue your research yeah Yeah. So and once you graduate what are the kind of opportunities you get in your field as a master's student graduate? Like there are multiple uh, opportunities like you can you can work in various labs like in the university itself mm. uh as a like a research tech position or a research assistant position that is more like a, a academic oriented position that you can get at the university apart from that you can also get placed into pharmaceutical companies one of my, my colleague uh, who graduated in 2019 he got placed in in a pharmaceutical company called gilead in edmonton okay yes yeah yeah so there are various opportunities so yeah and then like starting package you can expect around like more than like 50k for a year like hmm. that's not bad for a like recent that. grad yeah 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 So how is the overall life uh, you know in Saskatchewan is it a good place to live what can we expect from the weather are there any good you know places to hang out for a master student I mean as long as you can bear the cold here <laughs> you will be fine <laughs> <laughs> like the the weather here is kind of harsh in some ways like January February the temperature can go up to like minus 40 okay uh, yeah and though the pretty hard conditions but i think overall you'll be able to survive and the best thing is that you get lot of sun 
here okay. like compared to even if i have to like compare to like vancouver even though it's like a very warm place but sometimes in vancouver it can be like very cloudy yeah it's rainy. almost every day it's raining yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, I, i can i can relate to that yeah okay. so compared to that like here you, you get a lot of sun like even though if it's like minus 30 minus 40 outside mm-hmm. there will be sun shining and you can still feel the warmth as long as you're inside and what is the overall you know monthly expense if you are living as a student in Saskatchewan it's uh, comparatively cheaper than if you have to if you have to live in ontario or in bc i would say like on an average uh, for a single room you can uh, see about like 500 dollars per month oh that's not bad yeah it's not super expensive it's decent So would you like to give any advice to any individual who is applying for masters from outside of Canada and is planning to apply for a masters so what is the what is the best process to get success I mean again as i mentioned that uh, if you want to get into thesis based master program it's very important to find a supervisor and writing an email to a supervisor can be very crucial so just make sure that you are not sending a generalized email to all the supervisors okay okay you know make sure that you tailor your email according to their research and your experience so basically work on your uh, kind of like a sop when you write an email to to any supervisor like actually i have had experiences where i sent like few like generalized email to supervisor and then they replied to me that saying that it's very generalized you know like uh, okay okay and be patient because not all professor gonna reply to you mm. they won't tell you whether you know even if you're rejected or accepted they get like lots of emails every day and they won't uh, they won't open up until because they you don't even know if you if they are looking for a grad student because they don't advertise in a way that okay this supervisor is accepting student they might not have a funding right now or they already have enough people in their lab so okay. just keep trying okay yeah. yeah and does it help if in your undergrad you have done a bit of research or at the, yeah yeah that, definitely okay. that helps because uh, that kind of like strengthens your resume if you have any kind of like a research paper back home or anything published that help for sure okay so yeah i think that's uh, that's everything and i th- thank you so much for giving such fruitful advice to anyone who is planning to apply for masters especially in the university of saskatchewan and giving us a brief overview about life in saskatchewan thank you so much thank you ver thank you for having me and i really appreciate the effort that you're doing thank you gonna help a lot of people thanks so guys i hope this video was very helpful to you we are going to conduct interviews of such graduate students from different universities uh, as well as other people from different backgrounds to give you an overview about how life is in canada if you want me to conduct interview of students from particular university please let me know in the comment section till then please like share and subscribe to this channel keep watching and stay safe bye